Hello and welcome. Today's video is going to be about the FlySky F6i6 upgrade slash downgrade. The reason why I say it's a downgrade is because it's a 6 channel and if you're upgrading your CX20 remote thinking this is going to be better, you're kind of wrong. There is software and stuff that you can tweak around which is actually pretty cool. But when it comes down to it, uh, you lose channels. So if you have a gimbal, you're pretty much out of luck because switch B and switch C, once you combine them together, you actually lose channel five and six, leaving you no channels for your two variable switches. So you can't use your gimbal. So that's where I say it's a downgrade. Personally, I never really used these two dials on a CX-20, so it was kind of a pointless upgrade, but um, it feels a little bit better in the hands at least. Uh, I'm not really going to review this. Review this. I'm just going to show you guys basically how to set up your switches so it mimics the original CX-20 for your return to home and stuff like that. And um, yeah, so I'll show you a couple of settings. I'll show you how to bind a remote and uh, that's it. So I'll get on that. Right, so this video is going to jump around a little bit because there's some steps involved. So if you're going from your CX-20, on your board, unplug all the cables from your uh, RX, this white guy here, and uh, just put all the wires to the side. Uh, the minus B wire coming off the board right here, this is what you're going to use to bind it the first time around. So what you'll want to do is use that cable and plug it into the left side here where it says switch positive and negative, the white at the top, and this plugs in this way. And then it comes with a binding plug, which I've actually seen people try selling these. Um, some guy asked, he said he lost his or something like that, and some guy actually suggested selling them one, which is very ridiculous because I'll show you quickly after how just to make your own because it's just a normal cable. But anyways, so plug this in here like that move the quadcopter up you're going to use your real battery for this step All right now you'll want to plug in your CX20 battery give it a couple of seconds All right so this time when you turn on your FlySky remote you're going to hold this button here and push the power button on it's going to say binding and binding OK or something it's going to happen really quickly but here we go, push power up, and it said RX bind OK. And that's basically it, you've now done it. So unplug your CX-20, unplug the binding cable, and again just leave just the one cable up. So this time around what you can try doing is just turn the power on and you should get connection. And you should hear that beep. and. Uh, if you have the same one, you should get your volts here for your battery, for your TX and your RX. Uh, it shows the internal battery and the um, external coming from the quadcopter, which is kind of cool, I guess. But anyways, unplug the battery now, and I'll show you how to wire it up to your um, receivers. All right, I'm going to show you guys out of the uh, CX-20. So basically, the USB would be facing this way on the uh, CX-20. So just ignore these wires or from other projects. So here's this guy here. Now um, you should be left with a couple of cables after you remove them all. You should be having three of these guys here. So what I suggest doing on one of them is remove the black and red wire. Currently it sends uh, five volts to the APM and I'm not sure why they do that unless it's to stop it from floating like I said in my other videos. So it's up to you guys if you want to leave the black and red wire in one of them. But anyways, and if you do this, you now have a plug wire. So you can go to that guy and suggest you can sell him one or whatever. But anyways, so yeah, you can use that as a binding plug. That's how ridiculously easy it is to make the binding plug. I have no idea why that guy suggested to sell that guy one unless he was taking advantage of him. But anyways, okay, so here's the APM facing forward and this guy here. So plug in the first one. In the first part here and then this guy here if you turn them this way it's on this side 
and it would be I believe right at the bottom yes it is I don't believe it's a fact so it goes like that the next wire start with the white so it's white and white so it's just and then this guy goes for channel uh, two three and four so you got your two whites close together and down here two whites then you're left with this one wire left and he just goes in like this and he plugs in this way so that's how you do it on the original APM I'll show you on the other APM now here's the APM 2.6 it's really easy is basically one, two, three, four, five, six. So again, the first wire here goes for number one for your inputs. Two, three, and four. Goes that way. And then you're left with this lonely guy here. And he can go for number five. So you think you still have one left because it's a six channel, but I'll show you guys why you lose it soon. So it goes like that. Um, if you don't have a power module, your minus B plug can be plugged into here, coming off the CX-20. So get that guy into focus a little bit. So this cable here that's coming off the main board, if you don't have it, I would remove this I would remove this white wire too if you can. And this guy gets plugged in right here, right at the start of it, like that. Don't plug in both if you have a power module and this. And that's the same with the uh, this still gets plugged in the same way even for the original APM as well. For the uh, APM two five two or whatever off the CX twenty, the original one. Alright, so that's that. So now we, I've showed you how to bind it. I've showed you how to wire it like this. And uh, now I'll show you the settings on the remote. And then I'll show you the mission planner settings to set it for return to home and everything like that. All right, in this step, I'll show you the settings before we get into mission planner so we can set it all up. My settings are gonna be to set the uh, SWB and SWC to mimic the original CX-20. By doing this, you're going to lose these two switches here, the variable switches for your gimbal. Uh, play around after yourself. Maybe you won't like it this way. But anyways, I'll show you how I did it. So turn on your remote. Hold the OK button. Get into menu, then push down or up, and then push OK. Now the first thing we're going to want to go to is reverse. So push OK and then push down, oops, sorry, then push OK again. This cycles through them. Go to number two, and then set it to reverse. Then hold the button cancel until it gets back to the main menu, and then you can double check it. Just go back in there, and it should be set like that. Then you can just push cancel once. So the next step would be to change your aux channels. So for channel 5, you want to change it to source SWB. That switches it from SW, or the um, variable, to the switch. So this one gets set to SWB. By doing that, you just, I believe, you just push down and set it to SWB. Push OK. It goes to the next one, up and down until you get SWC and then hold down cancel. Right, the next thing you want to get to is go to uh, go down to mix, push OK. So on mix one, so push OK once, and then set the off to on. For master, set it to channel six. For slave, channel five. For position mix, 30%. And for negative mix, 70%. Then hold cancel to save it. Then push OK to go back in there again. This time on mix one, push it again. 
up once to go to mix 2, push OK, set this to on, push OK. For channel 1, set this to 5. For slave, set that to channel 5. For positive mix, set this to negative 100. For negative, set it to um, negative 60. After that's done, hold the cancel button. And that's it. So as it sits, it should work how it used to work in Mission Planner. So now I'll show you the Mission Planner settings. Um, you can play around in the mix to fine tune it better or to set it how you want. Right now, I believe I have four settings. And so it 100% it mimics the CX-20. But if you want an extra switch in it, I, I'm sure you can play with the percentages to get it right. So this took me a while to figure it out. So it might you can, might be able to tweak it a bit better than I have it. But anyways, that's that. So hopefully, uh, yeah, I'll get into Mission Planner. All right, connect to Mission Planner, turn on your remote, go into Initial Setup, go to Radio Calibration, go to Calibrate Radio, click OK, and then go through all the motions with your two joysticks, with your SWB and SWC, go through all the switch modes. All right, click when done. All right, the option here too is to do an ESC calibration. Hit me on YouTube and I'll send you a link to another video where I show you how to calibrate your ESCs. Because you have a high, uh, a new limit for your throttle, you might actually have to do a ESC calibration. But uh, you could try first without it if you want to. It's up to you guys. Okay, the next thing to do is the flight modes. Now with SWB and SWC at one and one with your new remote, it should be at the very first one here. You can change it to two on SWB and nothing should happen, except here it should change the numbers. So that's good. So you change the first one to stabilize. Change SWC to two. And that should be your loiter, your GPS hold. Set SWC to 3. And that should be return to land, return to home. All right, put SWC back at 1. And change SWB to 2. Nothing should happen. So now change SWC to 2. So now it's set at SWB2 and SWC2, and this one should be stabilized in simple mode. And you can remove this check mark from this guy. Next, change SWC to 3, and that would be SWB2, SWC3, and set that one to Alt Hold. And that's it. Now save your modes. Um, Set both of them back to SWB and SWC. Uh, you guys can play with your ratios if you want, and if you don't like these settings. And um, basically, you can add one more um, option somehow, because under SWB, if you change it to 2, nothing happens. So I'm pretty sure if you play with the ratios and you still have one empty slot, where you could actually change it to do something else if you really wanted to. But uh, I didn't want to do that. I just wanted my remote back to how the CX-20 was. And that's it. Hopefully this video was helpful, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.